Okay, right. Uh, a very good evening, guys. Can you all uh, let me know if you all can hear me and see a screen? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you see a screen? Yes. Right. Okay, perfect. So uh, today, guys, is uh, day two of our uh, revision program. Okay. And uh, today, we'll be focusing on the second area, uh, you know, a completely different area than what we uh, focused during the very first class. And uh, before we start, guys, I would have sent the tutes to almost all the students who have already uh, registered. Even today, I uh, packed around uh, 10 tutes for around 10 students who registered during the last uh, three, four days. Uh, most of you all by now should have got your tutes. Uh, the ones who haven't got your tutes might most likely be uh, maybe problems where the address that you have given was wrong. Or maybe you have not answered the phone when the courier company called. Yeah, uh, maybe because of those those reasons. So please make sure, guys, that when you all fill the form, uh, you give in the proper address. Okay, uh, make sure that you give a working telephone number and make sure that you answer the phone as well. So uh, we'll give it a couple of days, right? Uh, most likely the slots will get filled within, uh, let's say, this week. And once it's filled, if you still don't have the feud, uh, let me know. I'll see uh, what I can uh, do on my end. Okay. So uh, for today's part, how many of you all went through the focus area and came? Yes, you go through the focus areas for today's paper. Did you brush up your theory, maybe read your uh, theory to you, or, you know, something like that? Yes. Okay, right. So most of you all have done it. Good. Okay. Now, uh, remember, guys, I'm just repeating this in case there were people who missed the first class. So this is a revision class. We are not learning uh, theory, theory here. I will brush up the theory. Yes, I will brush up the theory and we'll mainly be focusing on getting that paper done, right? Working on our answer writing and all of it. So I want you all, I will expect you all to before the class, ideally during the weekend, to take around half an hour or 45 minutes to go through the theory parts, maybe take another one hour to make a short note on that area and also maybe another one hour to actually do the paper and come. And uh, within the week also, maybe you all can uh, complete your short note, complete the questions that you didn't do. That's okay. But there has to be some sort of preparing that you have to do before the class. Okay, that's now because this is a revision class and not a theory class. Now, for the theory class, I will not tell you to prepare and come. I will just ask you all to go through what we did last week and come. But for a revision class, you all have to do some sort of prepare ring to get the best use of the program. Now, okay. So, to start off with uh, today's part, can you all uh, first get your, uh, open up your theory recap tute, the uh, tute with the uh, theory that is summarized into question forms. Can you open up that first? Okay. You can open up your uh, theory recap tip, right? Uh, that is this tip, guys. The tip with uh, this cover. Okay. So you all can open uh, this up so we can get started. Mm -hmm. Right. Where were we? Okay. So last class, we spoke about certain areas, no? Now, last class, we had to go a little fast. Because I took one hour at the beginning to, uh, you know, kind of give you all a plan and explain about the revision program. So today we will, today is like a full proper class. So we don't have to rush. We don't have to, you know, uh, run through very, very fast. I'll take my time. I'll take around one hour to recap the theory. We'll take around one hour, uh, one and a half hours to do the paper. So ideally by around 6.30, we can wrap things up. Okay. So last class, we spoke about certain concepts. We spoke about micro and macroeconomics. We spoke about uh, positive and normative statements. Uh, then last class, we also spoke about uh, the different types of goods. I taught you all what is a good. I taught you all what is the difference between an economic and a non-economic good. We did that. Then we moved on to uh, economic bads I taught, taught you all about. Then we moved on to resources also. So we spoke about economic resources, non-economic resources, right? We did certain, certain things. And after that, 
the uh, different types of economic resources. These also we touched upon a little. We touched upon land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and uh, certain small, small things I uh, looked at over here. Yes, uh, can you all tell me, did you all make the short note? I got pictures from around uh, 10 to 20 students. Others, what happened for paper one? Did you make your short note and finish doing that? Yes, I'm asking you to make that short note and finish it off because for unit number one, there are only four papers. So once you make the short notes for the four papers and once you finish that off, then unit number one is done. Yeah, that means you can also, you also know that you have studied unit number one. Once you have, once you do those four papers, make the short notes for those four areas, unit number one is completely done. So with the revision class guys, now this is your study plan, okay? So each week, I want you to focus on those areas. On each, on top of each paper, there is a focus area. That is what you need to focus every week. So make sure during that week, you go through those areas in record, you make the short note and you get all of that done. And by the time you come to four classes, Unit number one is done. Can someone tell me, guess, how many marks do you get for unit number one out of your 200 mark A level paper? Unit number one will give you around how many marks? Roughly out of the 200 marks total paper. Unit number one will roughly give you around a 30 marks. Okay. To be very precise, now it gives you a 28. They give you four MCQs and one entire essay question. So four MCQs is eight marks. One entire essay question is 20 marks. That is a total of 28 marks that you will be getting from unit number one. So what, what am I telling you all? Study with me itself, make your short notes, get that done. And once you make a short note, I think you itself will feel very confident about that area, guys, okay? Uh, 28 out of 200. So, four MCQs, uh, one entire essay question. From your total, you have 100 marks for paper, 100 marks for paper, two, no? So, 28 out of 200 comes from unit number one alone. So, please make sure that you take things seriously. Okay. So, today, guys, we need to go through this area. Okay. We need to start talking about scarcity choice and opportunity cost. This area is actually not that hard. It's something that y'all already kind of know and y'all, you know, y'all have a good idea about. So today what I will be going through, I'll first talk about what is scarcity. I'll uh, then talk about how does that lead to uh, what choice and opportunity first. And finally, we'll also talk about the different types of uh, basic economic problems. And after that, next class, we will go into economic systems. That is uh, focus area number three. Okay, so without going through the truth, I'll go through this in my uh, screen itself. Okay, now I want you all to support me with this. Okay, guys, can you all tell me what is the basis for scarcity? Scarcity is formed through what? There are two things that lead to uh, us having something called scarcity. What and what? Hmm? Ah, what are the two factors, guys? The two factors that leads to scarcity is, number one, we have what? We have unlimited. We have what? We have unlimited. We have unlimited bonds. Along with unlimited bonds, we also have what? We also have limited resources. Now, this is where the problem comes. We have so many bonds, right? Unlimited. So many things that we want to buy, we want to have, so many nice, nice things. But if you look at your resources, yeah, to satisfy these bonds, the resources that you actually have are limited. You don't have unlimited resources. Because of this, what happens, guys? Because of this, we end up with or we have to face the problem of what? We have to face the problem of scarcity. 
density. Okay. So what's the problem? The problem of scarcity. Right. Now, how do we define scarcity? We say scarcity is the limitedness of resources compared to unlimited wants. So compared to our unlimited bonds, our resources are limited. That is what scarcity means. Can I ask you this question? Yes, does scarcity mean that we don't have resources? Does it mean that? Yes or no? Does scarcity mean that we don't have resources? No. Scarcity doesn't mean that we don't have resources. Scarcity means we have resources, but compared to our unlimited bonds, compared to our unlimited bonds only, those resources are limited. That is what you call scarcity. So you need to understand that. There is a nice question in today's paper. When we do that, I'll explain this even further. Now, guys, if you take, now what are we saying that what is facing scarcity? We are saying our resources have scarcity. That means our resources are limited compared to our unlimited wants. If this is the case, guys, now can you tell me, let's take, we'll, we'll take a scarce plot of land, right? We'll take a scarce plot of land, right? Y'all, let's say, uh, y'all after passing A levels, let's say you became island first. As a result of you becoming island first, let's say, uh, Ranil, right? Ranil gives you a big plot of land. Let's say he gives you uh, twen a 20 purchase plot of land in Columbus 7. Okay, next to his house in Columbus 7, he gives you a plot of land because what? You were island first. Now, this land is scarce. Can we, uh, do we have unlimited amounts of land? No, you only have a 20 purchase, small space of land that is there. Can you tell me with this scarce plot of land, how many things can we do, guys? Is there only one thing that we can do? Or does this scarce plot of land have a lot of alternative things that we can do with it? What do you all think? This scarce plot of land, can we only do one thing with it? Or can we do a lot of alternative different, different things? We can do a lot of different, different things, no? So we say, that this chaos plot of land, right? This chaos plot of land has what? Has alternative use. Now, I am just taking land, okay? You can connect this with any amount of any resource. I'm just taking land, okay? So, this chaos plot of land has alternative, alternative uses. Yes, can you give me some alternative uses for this uh, plot of land? What type of uses do you think? Okay, right, definitely we can build a house. Okay, like you all said, number one, right, we can build a house. What else? Uh, okay, right, maybe you can do some sort of, let's say, uh, cultivation or farming. Okay, fine, cultivation or let's say some sort of farming. Uh, okay, maybe you can uh, build a shopping complex. Now, this is in uh, Columbus 7, right? So, maybe, you know, uh, you can build in a uh, uh, shopping complex. Fine. Okay. Then, uh, some of you all told we can rent it out or uh, you can sell it also, right? Okay, we'll say we'll uh, rent out. Okay, so I've got so many different, different answers. So, now, this plot of land that we talked about has what? has a lot of alternative uses, okay? Now, my next question to you is, can we do all of this with the 20 purchase land that Ranil gifted you for becoming island first? Can you build a house and use it for cultivation and build a shopping mall also and uh, give it out for rent as well? Can you do all of this? You can't. Then what should you do? If you can't do all of this, what should you then do? Uh, now what happens? Given that these scarce resources, given that they have so many alternative users, what should we do now, guys? 
this leads us to the problem of what? This leads us to the problem of a choice. We now need to make a choice. You can't do everything, no? With your scarce resources that has so many alternative uses, you can't get everything done. So therefore, now what you have to do? Now, you have to make a choice. Yes. How do you usually make a choice? Okay? How does a consumer uh, usually make a choice? Do you like uh, close your eyes and, you know, do you tell a, fri a friend, uh, catch one of my fingers uh, and do you uh, decide like that? Is that how you make a choice? What do you do, guys? When you're making a choice, you rank the options, no? You see, ah, if I build it, give, a, give this land on rent, okay, I can get this much, this much of a benefit. If I, you know, let's say, uh, give it as a shopping complex, okay, I can get these, these things as benefits. So what will you do, guys? Remember, before anyone makes a choice, what does he do? Before anyone makes a choice, guys, this person will rank his option. He will rank it. Ah, this is my best option. Second maker. Third one is this. Ah, fourth one is this. Now, you will not just close your eyes and ah, right, uh, what do you feel like doing? Ah, playground, right? No, that's not what you do, no? Before you make a choice, you rank it. You might not write it on a paper and rank it. But in your mind, you do it. Now, why do you think right now, some of you all made the choice to come to this class here? Why do we have 80 odd people right now on this Zoom class? Because in the back of your head, you all would have had a few options. Right? Today is nice school holiday also. Most of you all have holidays. Right? Some of you all were thinking, okay, after lunch, one definite alternative use is, okay, I will nicely have a good nap. I'll have a good nap for the next uh, two, three hours. Some of you all would have thought, okay, let me just, you know, scroll my phone and uh, be on Facebook a little or Instagram. Some of you all thought, no, I will come to this class. Now, for those who came to this class, what did you do, guys? You did not write it and rank it. But in the back of your mind, you rank the class as option one. That's why you came to the class. Because if sleeping was your best option, you would have gone and slept. You thought, ah, I can get more benefits by coming to the class. Therefore, you decided to come. So remember, before anyone makes a choice, he ranks it in his head. Yeah. Now, this happens to guys. Have you all uh, decided, guys? Now, sometimes, you know, I remember when we were going for other classes, physical ones, sometimes all three subjects are on the same day, right? Very difficult. Though. So we go to uh, one class. Second class sometimes gets a little hard. And then, you know, after lunch, now you have to make a choice. Do we go to the third class? Or do we cut the class and do we go somewhere else? Then what do you do? We look at the benefits now. Right. right. I now, this I remember is a very common situation. Okay. Now, usually I remember uh, my third class was Econ, I think. Right. My, all, I had all my classes on Sundays. Okay. Now, the third class is Econ. Sometimes after lunch. Right. After lunch, it's always sleep, you know. Okay. So, then we, I remember, you know, now. We are deciding now when, on, after eating lunch, do we go back to the class or do we uh, go somewhere else? Right? So then, you know, when making this choice, you know what we do? We open the tutor little and see uh, what is there. Uh, these parts, uh, these parts I know, right? We can catch it up next week also. So you look at, uh, then you make that choice, right? By looking at the benefits, right? If I go to class, I'll learn this. If I go out, uh, I might feel relaxed. I might have some fun. I'll do this. So therefore, what happens, guys? Therefore, you make a choice because you can't do both. You can't have fun and go to class. Both in Lamai. Yeah. Cutting class and being stopped. Yes, that's possible, right? As long as you can balance things. Okay. So let's say I will rank my options like this. Okay. Let's say now, for example, I already have a house. No. So let's say for my, my best option is, uh, let's say having a shopping mall, right? Colombo 7, uh, nice land, right? So I am trying to have a shopping mall. That's my option. My second best option is, let's say, uh, give it out on rent, right? I will, uh, okay, not rent. Okay, let's say cultivation will, okay. uh, let's say cultivate, okay? Then I will have my third option, my fourth option. 
likewise what i will do i will rank it please can you tell me after ranking it which one will i select Number one, two, three, or four. Now I have ranked it by looking at the benefits and everything. I have ranked when make a tama one, make a two, make a three. Deal. What do I do? I'll always go with option one because why? In economics, we assume a consumer is a rational consumer. What is a rational consumer? Rational means he has some brains, he will do the best thing. That is what rationality means. Now, after ranking it one, two, three, four. You will not go and do your second or third one. No. Your ranking it number one means that is the best one. So as a rational consumer, what will you now do? You have now decided, right? I have now decided to build a shopping mall. Fine. Yes. Can you now tell me what problem does this lead to? After you make a choice, you decided to go with your best option. My best option is ah, when we a shopping mall, let down. Now, what does that lead to? This leads to what, guys? This leads to the creation of what? The creation of opportunity cost. Creation of opportunity cost. Guys, can you tell me, right, since you all already kind of have some idea, according to my example, what is my opportunity cost? What is my opportunity cost? Remember, guys, my opportunity cost is the benefit that I could have received by what? The benefit I could have received from my next best alternative. So what is my next best alternative? According to how I have ranked, what is my next best alternative? My next best alternative is cultivation. Now, I mean, the main thing cultivation. So, whatever benefit is, if I ask you, is my opportunity cost just the profit that I could have got from cultivation? Is it just that? No, right? Now, when you say the benefit you could have got from cultivation, it's not only the profit, right? For example, just think, okay, let's say you're planting some nice trees, vegetables, that's what you're doing. So what are the benefits? Yes, number one, you can get some profit. Maybe if you sell your vegetables, profit. Number two, maybe let's say uh, the peace of mind. You know, you're living in a nice environment with trees and, you know, that thing. Yeah, maybe uh, you're getting nutritious food to your house, right? That's also a benefit. No, Now, if you buy vegetables from outside, you know, they have put pesticides and all. But from your nice garden, you're using those vegetables. So maybe, you know, that satisfaction, satisfaction of eating a nutritious food. So all of those are benefits. So remember, if they ask you what is opportunity cost, don't say opportunity cost is cultivation. You need to be specifically say, my opportunity cost is the benefit I have foregone through cultivation. What is the benefit I foregone? Right? Maybe the profit. Maybe the satisfaction of having a, a healthy meal, right? Maybe, let's say, uh, the peace of mind. Yeah. So that is the opportunity cost. So remember, opportunity cost is what? The benefit for God. We say what? Guys? We say the benefit for God, for God from the next best alternative next best means the second best alternative okay from the next best alter alter make now guys some of you all make this mistake can you say this is opportunity cost the benefit of everything for god is opportunity cost the benefit of cultivation, uh, building a house, rent? Is it everything? Is everything my opportunity cost? No. Remember, opportunity cost is not what? Not everything that you forego. Opportunity cost is only the benefit of your next best thing. Remember that. A lot of people make this mistake. 
some people say no, sir opportunity cost is then uh, sir house and uh, uh, cultivation and this and that everything total bin total things that you forego no opportunity cost is not everything that you sacrifice opportunity cost is only the next best thing that you sacrifice okay so that is the basic story about scarcity alternative users and so on. so let me take one minute to recap for anyone who was daydreaming yes i'm repeating uh, for those who feel that you're losing focus for that now these online class like not like a physical class you know and you can't uh, see me right all of that is not there so therefore like i said last week be active on the chat box that definitely helps you to stay focused i also have learned university subjects online right that's what i'm telling you right i'm not just telling you uh, by teaching i was also a student a few years ago and that's how i also stayed focused and otherwise what happens is you're just looking at a screen sometimes you while on the screen you're on your phone also you have no idea what happened open your tube make notes now these kind of things now, now why did i draw this on the thing here this is for y'all to even now your short note can be something like this guys right now this can be the main structure of your short note and your birthday right happy birthday okay so this can be the main structure of your short note good to have people with their celebrating birthday still in class right good focus to that okay so this can be the structure of your uh, short note itself so you know just have that in mind you'll try to guys okay, now also i'm telling you short notes don't have to be very big also okay short note is not writing everything that is in the tune uh, in small letters no short note is you make like a small nice mind map when you look at it you should remember what is on the tune that is what that is the purpose of a short note short note take you don't have to write everything paragraphs and all of that tone in it right most of you all the pictures that you all sent you all have not made that mistake much okay because some people i see short note you want they write the same thing in small letters it doesn't work that way so for short notes write write small points draw arrows write uh, put different different things write highlight in different colors uh, do things like that when you see it you should remember what's on the tip okay so to summarize quickly we have unlimited wants but limited resources so that leads us to what that leads us to the problem called scarcity then i told you these scarce resources okay the ones that we are saying that has scarcity they have alternative uses you can do different different things so i for my explanation i took a plot of land so i told you lot of land not i told you you told me that it has so many alternative uses like building a house cultivating right shopping complex right giving it out on rent there were so many things and then you told me we can't do all of this we have to choose one so given that scarce resources had alternative uses what happened is we had to make a choice and then i told you before making a choice usually we will rank them as 1 2 3 4 and all in our mind right we might not write it on paper but we will rank them and we will select the best option and once you do that that leads us to something called an opportunity cost what is the opportunity cost opportunity cost we say is the benefit foregone from your next Best alternative benefit foregone from your next best alternate. Yes. Now, can you tell me? We'll talk about a few things. Yes. Can you tell me? Right. Is my opportunity cost? Will it be the same as your opportunity cost? Now, according to this example, my opportunity cost is whatever benefit I forego from uh, cultivation. does it have to be your opportunity cost also why not why shouldn't this be your opportunity cost how can they are be now in the how can they say that because opportunity cost is subjective it differs from person to person now according to me my how i rank 
will not be the way that you rank, no? Now, I ranked as shopping mall number one, cultivation number two, I ranked it that way. Maybe for you, let's say, the ranking is different. For you, what is most beneficial is maybe building a house. Maybe right now, you're in a rented house, so you would love to have your own house. So for you, best option is building a house. Maybe for you, second best option is, uh, let's say, for example, uh, I don't know, building a shopping complex. So, because people's choices, pe how people rank things are different. You can't say, nah, nah, opportunity cost, they can make, right? So, my opportunity cost can be different from your opportunity cost. How do we put this in uh, proper formal terms? What do we say? We say opportunity cost is what, guys? Opportunity cost is what? Opportunity cost is Ah, we say opportunity cost is opportunity cost is subjective. It differs from person to person. What do we say? Number one, opportunity cost is subjective. That means it differs, it differs from person to person. In simple terms, what does that mean? Your opportunity cost is, doesn't have to be my opportunity cost. It can be different. Yes, then can you tell me, is opportunity cost, is it a monetary concept? Does opportunity cost always have to be money? Now, did now my benefit foregone from cultivation? Is it only the profit? No, no. Right? My opportunity cost is profit is there. The uh the benefit I could have got from uh nice uh let's say uh, healthy fruits and vegetables that is there. The benefit I could have got from uh let's say uh, having a nice some trees, the peace of mind I could have got. That is there. So opportunity cost is not just money, no? So therefore, what can we say? We can say opportunity cost is not purely, right? Not purely a monetary concept. So it's not always money, guys. Opportunity cost doesn't mean uh, all the money, right? It can also include, right? It can also include what? It can also include, it can also include, include the real benefit, real benefit for God. Now, what is this real benefit for God? So this is the satisfaction that you could have got, right? The uh, healthy vegetables that you could have got from cultivation. Yes, that's why we say opportunity cost is not purely a monetary concept. Monetary means not a financial concept. It's not just a financial. So it will have, right? It will have the financials also. But in addition to that, it will have different. A relative concept, guys, means the first one. So the first one is what we say. It's different from person to person. So here we can say it's relative, right? Mine is not the same as you. Okay. Then guys, what else can you tell about opportunity cost? Give me some other like features or main points that you have to remember when they say opportunity cost. What else? First we said it's different from person to person. Then we said it's not just the uh, uh, monetary one. It's like a real thing. There is an external cost associated with opportunity cost. Fine. Uh, that part we'll learn in unit number eight. So for now, I will leave that. Okay. Uh, then we can also say opportunity cost is what? We can say opportunity cost is monad. Opportunity cost is positive. Or we can say opportunity cost is positive. For what type of goods? 
opportunity cost is positive for what type of good? For, uh, for economic goods. Now you will ask, sir, what is this positive? Right? Earlier I struggled to explain this. Okay. Now I, now it's very easy for me to explain this concept. Can you tell me if someone says, Machang, I am COVID positive. What does that mean? I tested positive. What does that mean? If I come and say, look here, children, I am uh, COVID positive. What does that mean? That means I have COVID, no? Uh, then what? Then relate that same thing to this one. Opportunity cost is positive for economic good. That means, remember, we learned it last class. Economic goods have opportunity cost. When producing economic goods, remember, we have to sacrifice our scarce resources. No, we use our scarce resources. So that will generate an opportunity cost. Uh, that is what it says. So when someone says uh, opportunity cost is a positive concept, don't get scared. Opportunity cost is a positive concept for economic goods. What does that mean? That means... For economic goods, usually there is an opportunity cost. Yes, there's opportunity. Okay, is that part clear? Because I am okay with these three points that I just uh, discussed so far. Tip. Okay, right. So let me give you uh, one minute to get a screenshot of this. Right. So, you know, now this can be, uh, you can use it. Uh, you, you know, your uh, this one doesn't have to be the I'll off my camera also so we can get a nice picture. Uh, yes, can someone take a nice uh, screenshot on and uh, send it on the group? There are uh, two groups, right? Uh, this is the uh, first part. Okay, yeah, off my camera also because that's my picture is also there on screen. Okay, I'll also take a screenshot from my iPad, but then sending this is very difficult because I don't have WhatsApp. On. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll also take a screenshot. Okay, right. Then, yes, uh, so far, do you all have any questions? Now I'm going to go a little bit more deeper. Okay, now we said opportunity cost is positive. Uh, economic goods and economic resources, yes, they're different. Remember, we learned it last class. Uh, resources, we say, are the land, labor, capital, entrepreneurs. Economic goods are the, uh, the pens or the pencils or the laptops or computers. Those are goods. Okay. So resources and goods are different. Then, guys, we say opportunity cost is positive for economic goods. My next question to you is, is opportunity cost always positive? Can, or can there be situations that opportunity cost is zero also. Opportunity cost won't be negative. But I'm asking, does it always have to be positive? Or are there situations that it can be zero? There are situations that it can be zero, no? Right? So remember, opportunity cost is positive for economic goods. Right? But, right, we can also say, not always, not one other. Not always. There can be what am I? There can be situations where there can be situations, situations where opportunity cost is zero or, or there is no opportunity cost. Okay. Can you give me the situations? We'll start one by one. Give me the situations now. Situation number one. When there is one. Number one is when there are unlimited resources. When there are what? Unlimited resources. In other words, we can call this what? Non economic. Non economic. Non economic. Goods, or you can say resources. Give me an example. Non-economic good or resource. How does this? Uh, how does this mean that there is no opportunity cost? 
ah, take something like sunlight will take will take sunlight not the saban cate right will take sunlight so if you take sunlight do you have to choose with my sunlight uh, today i will get electricity for my solar power uh, tomorrow i will dry my clothes with the sunlight uh, day after tomorrow i will you know uh, go a little outside the sunlight and i will feel the sunlight and sunbathe that is it do you have to make a choice no right because why because there is unlimited sunlight right so unlimited ness mean there is no choice there is no choice means there is no opportunity cost you can do everything remember how what leads to opportunity cost when there is no other when you make a choice your next best thing that you sacrifice that is your opportunity cost my question is when you have unlimited resources when you when you have so much of resources do you even have to make a choice you do it you can do everything so as a result what happens as a result there is no opportunity cost number 1 Can you give me another reason, guys? This is reason number one. Can you give me another one? When do you think uh, opportunity cost uh, will be zero? Okay, we'll say okay when there is unemployment. We can call it in situations of in situations of general general unemployment. Well, un, m, ploy. So, how does this happen? Economic bad doesn't connect here, guys. Don't put that in. Okay. Now think, think that there was some resource that was previously unemployed. That means you were not using it for anything. Okay. You were not using it for anything. Now. just because you use it are you sacrificing something let's say for example okay let's think pilu uh, let's think uh, okay you bought a packet of milk powder okay the cardboard box you have just thrown it in the garbage and kept unemployed you were not using it for anything now let's say you decided to take that milk packet box cardboard box cut it then let's say make a pen holder or something yeah are you sacrificing something because of that did you had to forego anything no no that cardboard box was just thrown no maybe in the dustbin near your kitchen no somewhere outside it was just thrown unemployed no one was using it so then when you use it are you sacrificing anything are you letting go of something no means there is no opportunity cost so when resources are unemployed remember when you use those unemployed resources there is no opportunity cost right uh, so the fact that it is already there in the sense it was there but it was not doing anything it's not sacrificing you're not giving up on something because you use that that's what you need to have in mind okay then there is the third one can you give me the third situation when can opportunity cost be zero yes you can even take your ahead good now, when there is monadala mai when there is absence of what absence of alternative uses alternative uses so when there are no other alternative uses then also right okay all right okay. then also there is no opportunity cost think guys think think of something like uh uh something like this remember i told you all a ship anchor a ship anchor what's a ship anchor 
a ship anchor is when the ship comes to the shore right when the ship comes to the shore you put that into the sea and keep so that the ship doesn't move no that's that that's the role of a ship anchor no it's used to stop the ship and keep it at one place now just cuz you use this ship anchor i am saying there is no opportunity cost how because this ship anchor didn't have any other alternative use no? the only use of this ship anchor is what the only use of the ship anchor is when the ship comes to the shore to put it and keep so that the ship doesn't move that's the only use that means there are no other alternative uses ne there is only one use for it what is the use to put it to the shore when the ship comes to ship comes close by that's the only use so then will there be opportunity cost no there is no opportunity cost now i'll uh, give you another example let's say okay my this right the apple pencil that i'm using for this class now this pencil that i'm using i'm only using it actually for the class guys i don't really i don't really draw pictures or uh, i don't do anything else so we'll assume that the only use of this is for me to do the class so just cuz i use this and do the class am i sacrificing anything hmm. so remember when there are no alternative uses also what happens there is no opportunity is that okay fine now nail cutter yes good example you can give a bridge that's also an example okay right now this is the basic story about opportunity cost and all of that okay maybe a lock fine then guys can you tell me how do you calculate opportunity cost like how do you calculate how do you calculate how do you calculate marginal opportunity cost this is a little connected with the ppc also okay but i will teach it to you today because we have already learned this guys right in theory how do you calculate marginal opportunity cost how do you calculate that is the what is marginal opportunity cost marginal opportunity cost is no not revenue minus the profit yeah that is fine that's the total opportunity cost that is unit number 4 right how do you calculate the marginal the, the opportunity cost of producing one extra unit now for example okay let's say okay we'll give an example let's say i have a plot of land okay i have a plot of land in my plot of land i can grow carrots carrots and i can grow uh, tomatoes okay now if i use my land and let's say if i produce 100 carrots i can produce let's say 50 tomatoes if i increase my carrot production let's say uh, to 200 that means now i am taking more space for carrots no? okay so okay let's say not 200 let's say uh, 150 will do now okay i increase my carrot production to 150 so now i am taking some more space to make carrot so therefore i can only produce let's say 30 tomatoes okay question is asking you question is asking you calculate the marginal opportunity cost of producing carrot or they ask you calculate the opportunity cost of producing one extra carrot what's the opportunity cost if the question says calculate calculate one other calculate the opportunity cost of producing producing one extra in other words marginal okay one extra unit of carrot some of you all are getting this wrong how do you calculate it's not 2.5 
what is the opportunity cost of producing one extra unit of capital? Think it. To produce 50 carrots, I have to sacrifice how much? To produce 50 carrots, to get 50 more carrots, I have to sacrifice 20 tomatoes. So what is the equation? Marginal opportunity cost equals foregone units divided by gained units. So tell me, to produce, to produce, to gain, right? To gain 50 carrots, I have to sacrifice how many tomatoes? To gain 50 carrots, to go from 100 to 150, I need to sacrifice, I need to forego 20 tomatoes. So what is my opportunity cost? What's my opportunity cost? Is? My opportunity cost is 0 0.4 what? 0 0.4 what? What is the opportunity cost of producing one extra unit of carrot? 0 0.4? Ah, 0 0.4 units of monada. 0 0.4 units of of tomato. Okay. Is that clear, guys? Remember, if they say what is the opportunity cost of moving, let's say, for example, they say, uh, okay, they call this, let's say, uh, they call this point A and point B. So if they say, what is the opportunity now? We will learn this in uh, when we do PPC, that is team number four, focus area four. I'm just trying to brush it up a little now. If they ask you, what is the opportunity cost of moving from production combination A to production combination B, what is your answer? If they say uh, moving from A to B, what is your answer? I'm asking you. When you're moving from production combination A to B, what is your opportunity cost? If you're moving from A to B, think, what are you sacrificing? When you're moving from A to B, you're increasing carrots by 50. What are you sacrificing for that? What are you foregoing? What's your opportunity cost? Your opportunity cost is 20 to matter. Now, you need to know, right? Okay. You need to know when to use the equation, when to take the total value. That is the tricky one. Remember this. If they ask you opportunity cost of producing one extra unit or the marginal opportunity cost, then use the equation foregone divided by gain. If they just ask you, what is the opportunity cost of moving from A to B, then you take the total what you sacrifice. Be very careful. Just have that in mind for now. We will. Uh, I'm not going into detail because I will go through this in team four. In the paper in team four, right? focus area four, not the next week, the week after what we are doing. There are questions on this. Okay. Divide by 4 into 0 0.5. Nothing like that, right? Oh, so I'm, how 0 0.4? 20 divided by 50 is 0 0.4, I guess. Not 50 divided by 20. Yeah? No. Okay. Right. So uh, that is it with my one hour of uh, theory recap. Uh, can you all maybe take a screenshot of this solves? Uh, okay, there is a question on chat box. I'll come to it. Uh, and see this, no? Mm, okay, I'll keep it here. Uh, remember, guys, the answer was how much? Uh, 0 0.4 units of tomatoes. Okay, so I'll have my camera off so you can take a uh, nice screen.
Okay. Right. Mm. Okay, there was a question on the chat box. If you imagine that you purchase a laptop for 75000 and you have not used it yet, current market price of your laptop is 50000 second hand. Okay. Currently price of the brand new laptop with same features of your one is 70000 Okay. What's the opportunity cost of holding the laptop? I'm not very clear with what your question is saying. Uh, shall we discuss this after class? I'm not uh, very clear with what your question, maybe if you were it wrong or not, we'll discuss it after class. Okay, I'll not waste time with everyone. You and me will just take it up after class. Right. Okay, so the discussion part is done. Okay, uh, we did all of this. Now we'll go back to our tute and see Api Mukakkari. If we missed anything, we'll okay. Ah, finally we have the three questions. So I went through this, right? Scarcity and choice. Uh, choice, opportunity cost, the characteristics. Uh, we learned uh, situations where it can be zero. Uh, we learned that how to uh, calculate opportunity cost. Okay, this also we had. Uh, yeah, this is the total opportunity cost. So total revenue minus economic profit. I didn't touch on this. Is because we will uh, talk about this in unit four. Now, here class people, remember these days we are doing unit number four. Remember? Economic profit equals a revenue minus total cost. Remember, the profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. Total cost means, remember, opportunity cost I told you. Direct plus indirect. See, you move this around, you get cost equals uh, revenue minus profit. That's how that comes, okay? So others, don't worry. Uh, and uh, since most of you are asking about a theory class and all, I'll just take a minute. Yes, in the theory class, if you all are joining, uh, don't join this month because uh, this month, in a sense, you can join from uh, not this week, next week onward. Uh, maybe the first class you can join as a free trial if needed uh, because uh, right now we are at the end of unit number four. So this Wednesday, I'm finishing unit number four. Uh, the next Wednesday, I will start unit number five. And unit number five is not connected to any of the other units. So one, two, three, four, you don't have to know to know unit number five. So then what you can do is if you're interested in joining the theory class, you can join unit number five from uh, next Wednesday onward. So you don't have to pay the fees for August. Uh, first class come for free. And then from September, you can pay the fees and join. No use paying the monthly fee for one class. No. So you can uh, do it that way if you're interested. And any of the previous units, I'll tell you all this case, since a lot of students do this. Now, some of you all I know, you all have just started studying. Now, now so many people who have just started studying, they try to join the 2025 class also because they have missed those units in the theory class. Now, theory class, I am doing unit number five no, next week. So then unit number one, two, three, four, what do I do, sir? Right. And what most of the teachers do is they tell you to join the 2025 class. But what you don't realize is, that is a lot of time consuming and that's a lot of expensive also. So just think for the twenty for the 2025 class, for you to learn the first four units, it will at least take you around eight to 10 months. Means you have to pay eight to 10 months class fees and you have to wait for eight to 10 months to learn those. So that is why I always say, you can purchase my theory class recording and the duty. So any unit that you have missed, that is more cheaper. We give it at uh, 2,500 per unit. Purchase the theory class recording and the tune, and you can power it up on your own page. You don't have to pay two, three months of 2025 uh, bachelor's class fee and ticker ticker. You don't have to learn it because that's, that's you know, that uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, if you're doing anything in 2025, you can drop me a text. I'll uh, give you the details. But I'm just telling you because there are so many people uh, trying to, you know, join both and all of that. Because that makes it very hard, guys. Okay? Right. Now, if we take a economy as a whole, if we take it now, so far, remember, in our example, we spoke about Monad. We spoke about, you know, we spoke about how you got one plot of land, how you, therefore you had to make a choice. Right? That is what we focused on. But if you take an entire country, or an entire economy, 
Now, if you take an entire economy, they also, because of scarcity and alternative users, even an economy has to answer, we say, three basic economic problems. What are the three problems? Number one, the economy has to decide what goods are they going to produce in what quantity because they can't produce everything. There are so many things that people want, unlimited wants. But can they produce everything that the people want? They can't. They have to decide, all ah, right, we'll produce okay, some resources, let's allocate to produce food. Some resources, okay, let's allocate to produce schools. So they have to decide, ah, what are we going to produce? In what quantities? This is also called what is the resource allocation problem because they can't produce everything. Then once they have decided what they are going to produce in what quantity, what should they do next, guys? They should now decide how are they going to produce? Kohomada produce kara. Are we going to use our labor? Are we going to use our capital? Right? You have to decide because you don't have unlimited labor capital. No? So if you use a lot of labor to produce this, maybe you have less labor to produce another good. So you have to be very thoughtful and they have to decide how are they going to produce? Labor intensive. Does that mean are we going to use a lot of labor? So are we going to do capital intensive? Are we going to use a lot of capital? So they have to make that easy so that is how to produce so what is the first question what to produce in what quantity second is how to produce and thirdly they have to then decide whom to produce what does that mean they have decided what to produce they have decided how to produce it all and let's say they have now produced the goods and finished now they have to decide how to distribute the goods that is what whom to produce means do we give it to anyone who has the money? Does that mean anyone who has the money can come and buy everything and go? Or do we try to distribute it equally among the people? So we have to make that decision. That is what you call the whom to produce question. Yes, I'm not going into very detail again since this is a revision class. Okay. So with that, our Focus area number two is done. So when you all are making your short note, you can focus until here. That is uh, page number 13, half of page number uh, 13. Right? This can be your focus for short note number two. Then after this, now the next part of the unit is on economic system. That is in order to answer these problems. Now who answers this? Who answers the problem what to produce? To answer those problems only, what happens? They create something called the economic system. And then they go on. Uh, whom to produce, guys? I'll come again. We have a question at the end. I'll come to it again at that point and re-explain. Okay? Anything else, guys? Anything that you're a little lost and need help with? Fine. Now I am telling this again and again and again. Please do your homework and come. Yeah. The paper is sent before itself. Yes. I'll go through the fact that part. Okay. So please take some time. Go through the papers and come. Because otherwise, it's going to be too fast, right? This is a revision class. Now, along with theory, if you're learning revision, completely fine. Then you're on track. But some people don't know your theory. You guys, you all have not learned theory. Then when you come for revision, it's hard. So just have that in mind. Uh, how can we get the tutor? Yes, all of these tutors are printed and sent. Uh, are you? Can you all check if you all are in any of the groups? Because I only have around ten set of tutors left. I printed two hundred. Almost hundred and ninety of them have gone. So I have around only ten or something left. So that means there is only ten slots left. So if anyone has not yet registered. Uh, and got added to a WhatsApp group and filled the form to get your tutes, please do it before the tutes end because after tutes end, I'll just share the PDFs only because I will not be uh, printing uh, tutes anymore because I, there is no point of me uh, printing one or two tutes, guys. Uh, to print that whole set of tutes itself, it costed me around 700, 800 rupees. Uh, so 
if you really want to get it uh, you need to do it fast can you come and collect yes if you are living close by to mount lavinia you can come and collect but remember i only have 10 left so the later you get it might run out. Okay. right so with that being said shall we uh, take our break and then come to the paper uh it's uh five ten now i'll give you all uh, your want five minutes or ten minutes we'll go until six thirty though ten okay okay so i'll give you a break till uh five twenty okay so take a break till five yes the paper is the most important part huh? theory recap part is from your theory that you don't have to come to be for a division class to learn that. Now, this is the most important part right so make sure that you are there in this so take a break until uh, 5 uh, 20 and come back we'll go through the paper so you have 10 minutes 